Okay. Um, what was the homework assignment? To update depth. Update depth. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, in, so you sort of confirmed. Did somebody else test to make sure our rotations worked? Does it seem to work for AVL tree? I think it did. All right. Perfect. I, mean, I typically write flawless code, so it's not surprising to me that it worked. I'm just. What if it didn't? Well, That's if it didn't, right. then I would just say I did that on purpose as an exercise for the reader. I just can visually check it. Uh, let's see. 300 binary tree. Okay. So we were supposed to... Uh, so what ends up happening is during our rotation uh, for our AVL tree as we're moving these uh, subtrees around, uh, the depth of each of our trees gets updated, okay? And I kind of gave you a starting point last time, but gave you a little bit of a hint that uh, uh, you're going to want there to be a trickle-down effect that happens related to your, uh, uh, your rotations. So now, if we kind of go back here, we have uh, uh, a tree that looks like this right now. So if we rotated left from this, what would happen? B, B would go where? We want to see who changes. So A drops down, right? This guy drops down here. Here, let's just follow our algorithm. We're going to find the pivot. So in this case, our pivot is right here. If we're, if we're, if we're saying this is out of balance and we want to rotate left, we're going to say that this guy's our pivot, correct? OK, so we found the pivot. Does the pivot have a left node? It does, but in this case, we're, ro oh, we, we did, we did, we, uh, this is rotating left. So does it have a left node? It does have a left node. So what are we going to do with that left node? Preserve it in piv LT. So we'll preserve that left node. Uh, in this case, pivot is A. Um, we'll leave these guys blank for right now. Okay, so we're going to preserve it in piv LT. Then we're going to preserve pivot's parent in P. Uh, in piv p, and pivot's parent in this case, we're going to say is just unknown. We don't have to worry about that in our, in our current little example. Uh, regardless, pivot's uh, uh, parent, which is uh, pivot, uh, which is going to be, well, these guys are labeled incorrectly right now. This is what it currently looks like, right? So piv, pivot is b, piv p is a, Piv GP is a question mark. So Pivot's grandparent doesn't necessarily matter in from a depth perspective perspective. Piv P and Pivot do. Alright. So we will ask, does Pivot have a left child? It does. That's D. Okay, so our tree looks like this. We set up a bunch of stuff. So preserve pivot's parent and piv P did that. Uh, if piv gp is not null, move piv gp's pointer from piv p to pivot. So this effectively does this. We take this subtree here. Let's actually copy the whole thing. We kind of move it out of the way. But we still have a pointer to it through piv p. Then we set piv gp's pointer to pivot, which effectively does that. Okay? And we can kind of drag this guy out over here for right now. All right, so this is our this is our tree right now. Uh did we disconnect it? Not yet. Uh oh, yeah, we did. And set left node to null. So this guy right here is currently nothing. So it looks like that right now. Right here, we say if uh, a piv LT and set left node to null. So if pivot had a left node, preserve it, which we did, then set it to null. So that's what things currently look like. All right, then set piv P uh, as pivot's left tree. So that's this guy here. So right off the bat, now we want to start thinking about this from a depth perspective. Pivot now has a new depth, does it not? Okay, pivot has a new depth. 
Then we're going to take this guy, we set this guy as pivot's left tree. Correct? Like that. Okay, and then we set piv p's parent to pivot. Uh, finally, we need to bring uh, piv lt back in. Where do we say that? Uh, we set piv p's right child to piv lt. So that's this guy right here. Okay, from this picture's perspective, what depth actually changed? Well, we know this guy's depth changed. We know that piv lt's depth may have changed. Do we know for, so basically we know two things for a fact. We know pivot's depth is now changed, and we know piv p's depth is now changed. And at the end of our rotation, do we know that our tree looks like this? Okay, tree looks like this. What were you going to say? It doesn't change then too, for sure. Uh, for sure, it would. It would. Uh, basically, what I'm getting at here, if we know for a fact that Pivot's depth has changed, and we know what Pivot's new depth should be, couldn't we ask Pivot to spill down, set Pivot's depth, and have Pivot set its children's depth? Pivot's depth is going to be what? One less than it used to be? Is that a true statement? Okay. Piv P's depth, regardless of what it used to be, isn't it now one greater than pivots? E's depth, regardless of what it used to be, isn't it one greater than pivots? C's depth, regardless of what it used to be, isn't it one greater than piv P's depth, which is one greater than pivots? So we can use this single entry point after a rotation to update all the depths that may have changed. Correct? So what we're going to do in our code here, this is our change depth. And the way we have it currently written is we had it by an amount. We were trying to adjust. Okay, we We're trying to adjust it. So change depth, we're going to do by an amount. But what we're going to do is we're going to set the depth of something as well. So right now, what we need to do using this as our example, is we need to set pivot's depth to be one less than it used to be, correct? Then we need to call upon pivot's tree, this is the root of a tree, right? And say, update depths. So that means his left child and right child will have a depth that's one greater than it used to be, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to update this guy. We're just gonna call it update depths. Um, let's see. Let's take in a new depth for it. And what are we going to do? We're going to set our depth, this dot depth, equal to the new depth. Then, if we have a left tree, we're going to change... Well, not change anymore. Now it's update depths. And what's the new depth going to be for our left tree? This dot depth plus one. Similarly, what will the new depth be for our right tree? This dot depth plus one. And this will spill down through, updating all the depths underneath pivot. Does that make sense? So then the last thing we need to do is inside of rotate right and rotate left, after we're done with the rotation, after this, we just have to say pivot dot update depth to be pivot dot depth minus one we know it's one less than it used to be. That's what we would do in a rotate right, same thing in a rotate left. Put little comments in here. 
update all of the depths under pivot. Can you go back up to the... No. <laughs> Let me put that other comment in real quick. You want to update depths? Yes. So this was essentially your homework assignment. Just change a couple of lines. That took you three hours? How long did it take? Did you work with him this time? Or did he have him do it else? How long did it take you? Under an hour. Under an hour? It took you just under three hours? All right. Does this make sense? Anybody do it a substantially different way besides larger? Okay, so you took that you took a binary tree as a parameter here? Yes. Okay, and what were you doing with that binary tree? Uh, I was taking the binary tree and then um, stepping through uh, like each side of the tree by tree by tree and then giving the changing the uh, max step plus uh, like giving the max step and then setting it to one side plus one. Okay. Oh, I got you. You were asking what the maximum depth is. So you were working backwards. You were working backwards through the tree, figuring out what the max depth of that subtree was, and then subtracting one from that and spilling through on that. Left equals tree dot. Oh, okay. That makes sense. All right. Does this make sense? The solution? All right. So, uh, again, this falls into the same category that we've been dealing with the last several classes, that working with uh, uh, nonlinear data structures whose uh, structure itself has meaning, we often need to talk about each of these individual points as a, as a data structure in and of itself. We're not having to adjust the depth of our entire tree, just the portion of the tree we were just working with. So regardless of how big the tree is above here, the only thing we even messed with after a rotation was this guy right here. So all we need to do is tell this guy right here to adjust his depth to be one less than it used to be. And then tell all of his children to adjust their depths relative to his depth. Make sense? So regardless of what their depths used to be, this guy and this guy have a depth one greater than him. This guy and this guy have a depth one greater than him. All right. So, yeah, and then we called, it's actually kind of somewhat important, we called update depths from inside of our rotate uh, left and rotate right. And remember, initially, we set depths on our add, correct? Yeah. Yeah, here, this is our add. As we're creating trees, we set their depth to be one greater than it used to be. Okay, so... Uh, any questions on binary trees in general? You use real one. Huh? Because you use one using Java. It's a built-in. Oh, a built-in binary tree? Yeah. All right, I'll show you the uh, documentation for Java's built-in binary tree. Should be Java dot. Actually, might be in just Java dot lang. And it may actually just be called a tree. I'm guessing it's in java.util. 
but I'm already this far down. Just a tree map. No, that's not what we want. We go to java.util. So we have an nary tree in Java. I want to see if we have a binary tree specifically. All right, so here's our, let's, those are interfaces. There's our linked list. Stack. Reset. Which is based on a tree map. Mm, that's a red black tree, which is another uh, self balancing tree implementation. So this would work like a binary tree, this red black tree thing. So if we created a tree map, let's look at the constructor for it. Uh, you actually have to write a function for your comparator, like to determine what should come before, what should come after. So in our binary tree, we said everything to the left of a, of an, of a root is less than or equal to it. Everything to the right is greater than or equal to it. You'd have to write a compare to method. Uh, for this guy or pass in um, a parent that has the compare to method in it for doing that comparison for when so when things get fed into the tree it calls that method to determine whether something comes to the left or comes to the right so actually in reality this maybe isn't that easy to use Yeah, I probably wouldn't use this. I'd just write your own for trees. Part of that might be, and this kind of comes down to our argument of uh, um, linear versus nonlinear data types. Linear data structures where the uh, information isn't contained within the structure of it, but only within it. Uh, can be written generically. Where a nonlinear data structure like binary trees, ABL trees, uh, red black trees, B trees, each of these kind of has their own model and how you build it is kind of important. So for instance, if we build a um, binary tree our way, we get to choose whether we want everything to the left of a root to be less than or equal to or everything to the uh, left of it to be less than, for example. So they've provided us a generic way for defining this, but in that generic way, what we have to do is we have to define the comparable for, we have to define the method for how do we do a comparison. When we're at this node and we decide should something go to the left or to the right of it, what function do we have to call that returns true or false, should go to the left, true or false. Um, so it actually doesn't seem like it's really an advantage to using this over just writing our own, especially as easy as binary trees really were to write. Don't think about AVL trees. Think about just our original binary tree, which really was, was not very much code, right? I mean, searching it was maybe a little bit more involved, but actually writing a binary tree is pretty easy. You create a, your root node, you create your root tree, you add something to it. If it already exists, you decide should it go to the left or to the right. If I already have a left node, Add it to my left. If I don't, it's my new left. Done. So really, a binary tree implementation yourself is only you know, 20 lines of code or something like that. 
Um, yeah, I actually would have thought they would have actually have a binary tree specific implementation. Um, but instead, it looks like they've just created this tree map class that allows you to kind of generically define um, uh, generically define trees of many types. Because something we can kind of talk about next a little bit is, uh, and I'm not going to spend tons of time on it because I want to get to graphs, which are just impossible. Well, for, for the ABL tree, do we still have to go through rebalance? Uh, well, we can. Uh, I'll look at it here in a second. Uh, that's only a couple lines of code. Now we wrote the other stuff, right? Okay, so, um, you know, the next thing we might look at is an n-ary tree. Okay, an n-ary tree loses some of the focus that a binary tree has. Where a binary tree, we're guaranteed what the internal structure is. An n-ary tree, every tree has zero or more subtrees. So right off the bat, we've lost structure. We don't know if the things that come to the left are actually greater than or equal to the things that come to the right and so on. It's just a way of representing data. Okay, so a lot of times, n-ary trees are used for representing non-arithmetic data. Things we're doing direct comparisons don't necessarily... Uh, um, uh, don't necessarily have uh, any meaning. It's more just an organization of things. That kind of makes sense. And I'm actually not going to give us an example of NRE trees because I want to get into graphs. But if we want to go and look at the rebalancing thing here real quick, that comes at the end of every one of our ads, correct? After we add something, we have to ask, hold on, this over here, folding, collapse all, there we go. So in our ad, Uh, well, we have a thing called get max depth, and then do we have, oh, we have is balance. We wrote is balanced already, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So is balance returns true if it's balanced and returns false if not. So really, ad's actually pretty easy. So at the end of ad, before we do anything else, do we need to rebalance? So if this dot... is balanced. So if it's not balanced, if it's not balanced, we need to either do a rotate left or a rotate right. How do we determine which of those we need to do? Don't we need to ask which side is out of balance? And how do we do that? Get max depth. Get max depth. Are we guaranteed, if this is happening at the top level, after we've added, are we guaranteed, um, actually this is kind of a, another interesting, uh, interesting question. Um, before I ask this, I'm in the add method right now. And notice inside this add method, we're calling other add methods. Do I want to ask if this is balanced on all of those? Well, eventually, one of these calls it would be, but each of these individual guys is going to get to that line of code as well. Don't I only want to potentially rebalance the tree if I'm the parent? How do I know if I'm the parent or one of the children? If we're calling this ad method 15 times, potentially, my parents equal to null. Okay, so I only want to do this if this dot parent is equal to null. Yeah, we could. Okay, this asks, am I the top level root node, root tree? 
So only when we're back to the top level do we need to potentially rebalance. So we'll ask, is the tree balanced? If it is, well, in this case, if it's not, we need to figure out which side is out of balance. So if, now if I'm the top level and I am out of balance, am I guaranteed to have both the left and right child? Remember, is, is balanced returns false if the difference between the left and right is one. Am I guaranteed to have both the left and right? Not necessarily. I could have no left and the right could be something monstrous. Realistically speaking, it shouldn't be monstrous. It might just be one off. Correct? Well, I think in this case it would be two off for when we call update. But, you know, we potentially are just always adding stuff to the right, never to the left. So we can't necessarily assume we have a left node here. So if this dot left tree is not equal to null, meaning we have one. Well, actually, let's, let's ask this a couple different ways. If left tree is equal to null, if we don't have a left tree, we know it's the right tree out of balance. The right tree is out of balance. Else if this dot right tree is equal to null, we know that the left tree is out of balance. Else. Else we have a left and we have a right tree. We need to determine which one has the maximum depth. Correct? Who, ha who is actually out of balance, left or right? So at this point, if I'm in the else, we know we have a left and a right tree. All right, how do I ask to see if the left tree is the one that's longer than the right tree? So if this dot left tree dot get max depth is greater than this dot right tree dot get max depth. If that's a true statement, that means the left tree is longer than the right tree. Therefore, it's the one that's out of balance. It's the one we need to rotate. Okay. If the left tree is out of balance, how do we rotate? Rotate right. So what do we say? We say this dot, well here, let's write this real quick, rotate right, <coughs> else rotate left, correct? Rotate right, rotate left is what we're going to do in here. Now remember our rotate methods. require us to pass it the pivot. If we are left tree heavy, how do I find the pivot? Back to our picture here. We're way up top here somewhere. Okay, so somewhere up here we have a, a situation where our left tree is, this actually isn't out of balance, but let's just assume it is. Okay, um, we have a left tree that's out of uh uh, out of order. How do we know where our pivot is? Uh, we haven't even called it once yet, though. We haven't called rotate right or rotate left. But rotate right and rotate left require us to pass at the pivot point. Correct? We need to tell it where to start. What do you think? The grandchild of the of yourself? Again, we have to think about our tree as a structure. Let me uh, give you a, a, a another picture. Just steal one of these guys real quick. So let's say we have a tree that looks like this. We'll 
Let's do one more for good measure. And then I need to put one here. So this guy has a max depth of one. This guy has a max depth of three. Therefore, it's out of balance. Correct? So how do I fix this tree? Grandparent, this kid, the left tree. Well, right now I have access right here. Yeah. Who's the pivot? The grandchild's in here. So left tree's left tree. This guy's left tree. So the grandchild, this is the pivot. Is that always going to be the case? Is that still out of balance? We don't have a left tree. How do we balance this tree? We have the rotations. We have the tools. We have the technology. But how do we get to the part of the tree that we need to start rotating? Remember when we first looked at the algorithm for it? We had a left-left a rotation, a left-right rotation, a right-left rotation, and a right-right rotation. How do we figure out what's our first rotation? After we know our first move, all the other moves are just alternates. Okay, but we got to get to our first move. How do we figure out where that original pivot point is and whether we're rotating left or right off that pivot point? Well, it's likely going to have something to do with max depth. But again, this is how we deal with the structure here. If I'm looking at this tree and I've determined that this tree is out of balance, we know it's out of balance because the difference between one side and the other side is greater than one, correct? Now I've determined that I know the problem guy is this guy. He's the problem, correct? So let me just separate him from the group here for a second. I don't have to ask if this guy is out of balance. I don't have to ask that question. I know I wouldn't be looking at this unless rotations were necessary. So now I'm looking at just this tree. Where's the pivot in just this tree? It's that guy, right? How do you know that? Go ahead. Uh, is it possible to traverse both sides of the tree and then like whichever one reaches null first? We know that one isn't the pivot. Okay. Um, so let's just write here, what we're trying to accomplish is find the pivot. Because pivot's required for both of our rotation methods, correct? So we need to find the pivot. I know that my root node is the left child in this case of the original. So I, I, looking at this part of the tree is easy. We can get to that part of the tree. This is this dot left from our original, okay? But now all I care about in the entire world is this guy right here. That's it. That's all I care about is this guy right here. The rest of this tree over here is dead to me for the moment. Okay? So now you want to traverse both sides until we find something with a null? Yeah, and if you reach the, whichever one has a null, I'm thinking like if you go down the left side, there's a null, it's going to hit null, and then we know that if it's going at the same pace as the right side, then we know that like you can stop with right there. Okay, so I can, if I'm starting with this guy and I see he does not have a left node, therefore, well, we know he has a right node. I mean, in this particular case, we know he has a right node because we wouldn't be here unless it was out of balance. It's got either a left or right node, otherwise we checked for out of balance incorrectly, correct? So if he does not have a left node, our pivot's the right node. But what if he did have, spread him out a little bit. What if he did have a left node? Well, he's like, like that's true. Right. 
So we're going to go here. Does he have a left child? Yes. Does he have a right child? Yes. So now what do you want to do? You want to follow these two? Okay. So now we're here. You're going to ask, does this guy have a left child? Does this guy have a right child? Well, this guy has a null for his right child. But he has a left child. But he does have a left child. So it comes down to number of children. Well, we can certainly write it. We can certainly go down through the tree and determine who has the most kids. The question is, does that help us? Is knowing who has the most children beneficial in, in identifying the pivot? Depth minus one and it has a child. All right, take me through that. So you go down and you find the max depth. Max depth of left and right. Well, yeah. The, I mean. So this guy has a max depth of one. Well, let's just say it's one in this example. This guy has a max depth of two. Mm -hmm. So we know that this side's longer. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to hunt for our pivot over here. Yes. Okay, so now we're here. Okay, this guy has a max depth of nothing over here and a max depth of one over here. It's related to what we've already said. We do care about children. We don't care about how many children. And I want us to think about something here. When we came over to this left-hand side, our very first decision was what? Since left side is out of balance, we're going to have to rotate right. Correct? Now we're at this level. Which side of the tree is out of balance? Well, we can visually see it's the right side. Okay? So we can do our, we can do our math, figure out, okay, who's got the max depth? This guy? or this guy. Remember, we already have a method to determine if a tree is out of balance. Every tree has access to that method. So we could just ask the question, given the tree whose starting point is this, whose root node is that, is this tree out of balance? Is it guaranteed to be yes? Not necessarily. It's a balanced tree. That's not really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you asked it for the wrong reason. I'm talking about how we rotate. Let's just assume for a second. I'll, I'll give us one uh, one additional thing just so you see what I was getting at here. Now this tree's out of balance, correct? As soon as and which which side is out of balance? The right. So as soon as I go to the right side. What am I doing? I want to rotate left. This is a, remember those recursive-ish calls I talked about? If I have my top level tree and my tree is out of balance, I ask which side is out of, out of balance. If it's the left hand side that's out of balance, what am I going to do? I'm going to tell him to rotate right. But before I tell him to rotate right, he needs to check if he's out of balance. If he's out of balance, we're going to figure out which side he's out of balance on. And if it's out of balance on the right-hand side, we then need to tell his right node to rotate left. So we need to keep passing the buck down the tree, alternating depend, de, uh, depending on whether I'm rotating left or rotating right, and then ultimately let it unwind up the tree to finish the rotation. Does that make sense? It's only complicated if we try to expose the entire tree through our logic, instead of just letting each root tree, each root node, deal with its own logic. All right? So what I mean by that is, if we've determined right here, uh, actually, no, where, where I'm lost. Okay, here we are. 
if the right tree is out of balance here, what do we need to do? We need to tell the right tree to rotate left. So, huh? All right. So this dot right tree dot rotate left. And who's the pivot? Let's look at a simple tree. Um, yeah, so this is a simple tree. So if this is my tree, forget about these guys for a second. This is my tree. We are out of balance, and it's the right side that's out of balance. Who's the pivot here? Who's the rotate left pivot? That guy. Right? We might need to go down farther, but from the perspective of this guy, we need to rotate left about this guy. Because ultimately, we're trying to balance this tree. We might need to tell other guys to do rotations. But from the perspective of this guy, it's his right tree. That's the pivot. So the pivot point here will be this dot right tree. I'm going to tell my right tree to rotate left about himself. Okay. Leave it at that for right now. So let's, let's follow the right tree. Let's keep our logic going here. So we've told our right tree to rotate, uh, rotate left. And just for the sake of this argument, we're going to say that balanced means that it has to be uh, equal, just so we can have multiple unbalances here. Instead of being two, two is two, it has to be two to be uh, the depth has to be more than one in order for it to be unbalanced. We're going to say if it looks unbalanced, it's unbalanced, just so we can see the multiple moves. So because it's the right hand side that is out of balance, we're going to rotate left about this guy. So I'm going to like mark this. This is we're going to call this guy pivot one. Now, before I do this rotation. Before I do that rotation, what do I need to do? Is this tree balanced? So is the tree whose root tree is pivot, is that tree balanced? So we're going to say no. Which side is out of balance? So actually I'm going to do this, um, call this rotate L. So we're going to rotate left among pivot one. Then we're going to say we need to rotate right about pivot two. That makes sense? Is this tree balanced? I think we at some point we have to say yes, right? So we're going to say yes in this case. This has a depth of one. This has a depth of zero. If we rotate it, it's going to be zero and one instead of one and zero. Okay, so at some point we have to say yes. We're going to say that this guy is now balanced. So as soon as we get here, we're going to say, is this guy balanced? Yes, he is. We do not need to do rotations beneath this. Make sense? So what are we going to do? We're going to do this rotation first. So what does this rotation say to do? Let's say do this, then do this. Anything special happen with this guy? No, it was only if he had a right node, correct? All right, so now it looks like this. Am I supposed to do a left rotation on this guy now? Uh-oh. No, because the right is not over here. This is my new pivot. So now I need to do a left pivot on this guy. So I actually really care about the, the farthest down pivot that I can find. And I need to keep track of what's the first move. Does that make sense? So And then I keep making moves as long as the tree underneath him is out of balance. So let's roll back here for a second. I determined this was my original guess at my pivot. 
Then I asked, is this tree balanced? We decided no. So since this tree wasn't balanced, I figured out which side is out of balance. So we started off, I'm going to remove the pivot one, pivot two stuff. So we start off at pivot. If the right tree was out of balance, I'm pivoting, I'm going to rotate left. But now, this tree is actually out of balance. Is it out of balance left or right? It's out of balance left. So I'll move my pivot down there, but now I need to rotate right. Then I ask, is this tree out of balance? No. It's not. So what do I do? I do my rotation to the right, which we've already written. We've already written the code for this. Then I update. I need to do a rotation to the left. That takes this guy where? Up here. What happens to this guy? Drops down here. What happens to this guy? Comes here. And this guy goes there. Are we now balanced? By our definition? By our definition, we're balanced. So notice that I had to alternate my pivots. I should go down one more. I determined that this was a potential pivot, but wasn't the pivot. So I then determined this guy was a potential pivot. And then he proved to be the pivot. Because he is the root of the tree that's finely balanced. We had to keep traversing our right tree until we finally found a tree that was balanced. Make sense? So it's him that needs to rotate. And what do I do with this? What we're going to find, and here's an interesting caveat to this, will I ever have to go down more than two levels? This is getting back to the, uh, uh, the initial algorithm we looked at, where we have a left-right and a right-left rotation. Will I ever have to go more than two levels down? I'll give you the answer. The answer is no. Now tell me why. Why would I never have to search for a pivot more than two levels down in an AVL tree? Because it would have already been balanced. Why? Because you're balancing when you add it. Every single time I add, I potentially balance. So I am guaranteed that I'm not that far out of balance at any point in time. Because every single time I call my rotate left or rotate, every single time I add something, I check, is this guy out of balance by definition? If it is, fix it. So I don't let it get to this point of being horribly out of balance. At most, it's two levels down. Right? Question. Is it ever less than two levels down? You're asking if the pivot... Ever less than Will the pivot levels? ever be less than two levels down? If a tree is out of balance by our definition, will the pivot ever will the pivot ever be anything but two levels down? No, because that's the one that the next one's going to be out of balance. Right? Can you give me an example of a tree where this guy would be the pivot? You've already told me it'll never be more than two levels down. I agree with that. That one's relatively clear because we're, we're always rebalancing our tree. Right? Whenever we're out of balance by more than one level, we're rebalancing. So we don't let ourselves get to a situation of being out of balance. You know, if we wrote a bad AVL tree and weren't calling rebalance potentially every single time, then maybe. But by rules of AVL trees, we're never going to be out of balance by more than one extra depth. Okay, so we never have to go down more than two. Can you give me a tree, an example of a tree, where our pivot would actually be this guy? Or our initial thing would be a rotate left. It's 
all my ice melting in my Diet Mountain Dew. It makes me very upset. Off topic. <laughs> what do you think? Can you give me an example? <clears throat> Nothing, nothing on the left. These guys are gone. No, no, no. This guy. So this has a depth of zero. This has a depth of one, two, three. Would it ever get this far out of bounds? So if you take one off the left, right there. This guy. See so what this tree? Okay. Where's my pivot? Is this my pivot? Is this tree out of balance? Yeah. This has a depth of zero. This has a depth of two. We're out of balance. Okay. So I go to the right tree. Is this tree out of balance? It's not. So I'm rotating left. This is the simple. This is the trivial rotation. I only need to rotate once. Correct? So is the answer that it is possible to have a situation where my pivot is only one level down, but it'll never be more than two levels down. Make sense? If it's one level down and it's to the right, I'm always rotating to the left. If it's two levels down, will it always be to the left side? Well, another interesting question. So let's put some numbers. Let's put some numbers to this. So we're going to say this is 5. This is 6. Uh, and actually, let's make this 7. And then this would be 6. That plays by binary tree rules. Okay. So we're throwing 8 in here. There's an 8. So we know this tree's out of balance, the whole thing. We know it's out of balance to the right side. So we'll go to the right side. Is this tree out of balance? No. So who's my pivot? This guy. Pivot's the root of the first tree that's not out of balance. Fair enough? Uh, get it? Fair? Get it? Ha ha. All right, so this is the first tree that's not out of balance. Is this my pivot? I'm rotating left. Why am I rotating left? Because it was the tree to the right that was out of bounds. Correct? All right, well, let's add another thing here. Ah, we can get that far. My tree would never look like this. I would have rebalanced it the previous time. That makes sense? So, is there ever a situation? Or I have to go down one more level that I wouldn't go the other direction. Will I always alternate? If I'm, if I'm out of balance at this top level, I know that I'm going to go to the right in this case. So my potential pivot is rotate is to the right and it's going to be a rotate left. If I am out of balance here, must I be out of balance to the left? It is possible for me to be out of balance here, correct? We've seen that. Can you give me an example of this tree right here where I'd be out of balance? Um, if I just got rid of the six? Yeah. Well, this isn't out of balance. Well, it looks stupid, but it's not out of balance. The whole tree's out of balance, but I'm not out of balance at this level. Okay, yeah, I'm not out of balance at this okay. level. Yeah, I'm talking about I have to go down another okay. level. You put a six down there. Put a six where? That down to the left, but then you have to drop a five down and have a different one on that, right? All right, so you want me to... Drop that down next to the left tree of six. Okay, you want me to have this guy? And then what do you want me to have at the top? Just the left silver, or do you have a four? I can have a six here, I think. Well, then the five would be like we have a lot of side. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So four at the five, okay, so now we have a four. Is this out of balance? This is zero. It's too far out of balance. Would we ever get into this position? Can't get into this position. So that's a no-go. Can you give me an example of where I would have to go down another level and the pivot would again be to the right? Hmm? Not possible? Because it will rebalance. If you rebalance the then you shift the eight to the left. And then there wouldn't have an And it became balanced. But one of the nodes one of the pivots was missing inside. Couldn't it just add automatically to the right? On the rotation, yes. I'm asking before I even start. I'm trying to determine my, my initial pivot. Because then what we do is we follow the pivot up the tree. Right? Rotate left, rotate right. We'll never have to do more than two rotations. As long as we're always calling rebalance. So what I'm asking is, if I'm going to a right tree like this for my initial pivot, can you give me an example where I have to go down one more level but that one more level is going to be to the right. Or will it always be to the left? Give me an example of a tree that's out of balance where I would have to drop down to the left. Something like that. In this case, I would come in here. I notice that the right side's heavy, so I go here's my pivot. That I notice that this guy is technically not out of balance. Right? He's technically not out of balance. So I actually would just leave this as the pivot, wouldn't I? Okay. Or would I? Why? What do you mean the original tree is out of balance? Well, it's parent. So I have this tree. I'm, now I'm just interested in the tree of this. I'm going to ignore these guys. Is this guy out of balance? This is a depth of one. This has a depth of two. Is that within one? It is. So by definition, is this tree out of balance? It's not. So do I need to go down another level? Or do I just rotate this? Rotate left. And then pivots at the top of the tree. Also, well, give me an example where I have to go down two levels. If I rotate left, so the seven becomes the new root. Yes. The uh, um, Let's just take this guy off here real quick. Well, no, we actually need that guy in there. Okay, so the 7 becomes a new root. 5 becomes this guy's left node. Yeah. What happens to this? So this gets preserved, right? Okay. So these guys then drop off. They fall underneath this. And this guy becomes 5's right node. Still out of balance. You don't know it yet, but you just stumbled onto uh, a, a big deal. I'm going to re-ask a previous question. And, and remember, I'm trying to trick you. I'm always trying to trick you. Re-ask a previous question. Will we ever go down just one level? No. Well, now you're just answering that because that was the, it seemed like it was the wrong answer before. We guaranteed we'd never go down more than two levels. Then I asked the follow-up question, will we ever go down less than two levels? If it's a true, if it's a true we rotate. Okay, how do, I, how do I identify a trivial rotate? Well, if it's a rotate left, its pivot won't have a right node. If it's, if a, it's ro a rotate right, its left node won't, the pivot's left node. 
right? Huh? If it's a rotate left, the pivot will, will have a null for right one. I mean, for the right tree. Mm -hmm. And if it's a rotate right, it the pivot's left tree is a null. In this tree, would I pivot about this guy, or would I pivot about this guy? For trivial? Mm, no, like, just in general. Throw out this trivial rotation thing for a few minutes. Rotate on the six. So if I rotate on the six, what happens to this? Uh, so pivot becomes this, and I'm rotating right. So when I rotate on the six, what happens? These guys drop down. The six pops up. Does the eight go over here? Stays like this. Okay. Now, I just rotated right. Next thing I'm going to do is rotate left. When I rotate left, what happens? Five drops down here. Anything else happen with these? Is this now in balance? By definition, it's in balance, correct? Did it hurt us going down two levels? Didn't seem most obvious at first. Are we guaranteed to always have a second level? If we're out of balance, if we're out of balance, we're guaranteed to have a second level. But we're never going to be more than two levels out of balance. Make sense? So every rotation will always be either left, right, or right, left, right, or Right, left. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> that guy. Okay. I'm so glad the uh, the recording doesn't catch my uh, my awesome <laughs> hand gestures. Okay. There's not. Okay. And the reason is because we're doing our rebalancing every time. It's not that we couldn't do a left left or a right right. It's that left lefts and right rights aren't found because of the nature of how a binary tree works and the fact that we're checking to see if we need to do a rotation every single time. Make sense? So then, if I'm here, if the tree is not balanced and the left tree is null, who will my pivot be? the right tree that's out of balance, so it'll be my right tree's left child. So we'll have a right rotation, then a left rotation. That's the pivot. Make sense? A little comment in there that might help you in your homework. Missing a line in here. If we're dealing with the right tree being null, that means the left tree is out of balance. So this dot left tree dot rotate. Because we're doing a right, then a left. Missing line. <clears throat> All right, so this dot left tree dot rotate left. This dot left tree dot
dot write tree. Missing a line. Oh, actually, this is this guy goes down here. This guy goes right here. Make sense? So if this tree is not balanced, then what do we do? Well, if we don't have a left tree, then it must be the right side that's out of balance. And to rebalance the right side, we must go to our right tree's left tree and rotate him right. Then I need to do a rotate left about a pivot, some pivot. That's what you'll have to figure out. Similarly, if it's the right tree that's null, I'm going to rotate left about the left tree's right tree, followed by a rotate right about some pivot, which you'll have to figure out. Otherwise, I'm basically doing the same thing here. I'm basically just saying, okay, I, I have both the left and right tree. Which side is out of balance? Make sense? Is it the left side or the right side? Which of those subtrees is out of balance? Let me ask you this. Would we ever get in this else? Is it possible to have a tree that's out of balance where the top level node has both a left and a right child? Show me a tree that's out of balance where the top level node has both a right and a left child. Is this tree out of balance? No. It's not. So let's add a value to it. How would it become out of balance? I had something here. So that's adding a 9. So now I have a level 1 here, a level 3 here. Is that out of balance? Is this a potential tree? Could we be in this position? Why not? All right, so is this tree out of balance? No. Well, I just added something. I just added this 9 to my tree. Is 9 less than or equal to 6, or is it greater than 6? Greater. Greater. Is it less than or equal to 7, or is it greater than 7? So less than or equal to 8, or is it greater than 8? Greater. Then I'm going to check. Are we out of balance? Yes. We're out of balance now. So is this tree possible? It's a possible tree. So what would I do? I'm going to say, which side is out of balance? The right side. Uh-oh. What's the problem here? Let me go back to this. Is this tree possible? Can that happen? You were saying something about it only can happen if we are, uh, because we're rotating in the add. Can we add this guy yet? Or do we need to rotate first? And remember, I'm trying to trick you. Well, that's what, I mean, so if we did this, we would add it. So now it's, it's spilled through our tree. We're now in position. And now we need, we decide, okay, we're out of balance now, so I need to rotate. Correct? Mm -hmm. I need to rotate. But now we've kind of broken what we said our logic is. That is, if I'm rotating here, what happens? Well, the very next thing I'm going to say, I, I'm saying we always have to go down two levels. 
will never just go down one level. I'll always have to go down two levels. So if I'm always going to go down two levels, what do I do? Well, you would hope that we're going to be rotating among this guy. We don't have a guy over here because of the nature of the numbers that came in. So I have to go to the right again and rotate left, then rotate left. Well, that doesn't seem to make sense. Let me ask you this. This tree, by definition, is it out of balance? No. no. Is it perfectly balanced? No. What would happen if I said, okay, the right side's deeper than the left? What would happen if I rotated this once to the left? Then it's still not out of balance. Okay. So trivial rotations out. For your homework, finish writing this, uh, where am I at here? Where's the top of my method? Oh, I'm at the end of the ad method. Okay, good. So here's the ad. Finish writing the ad method for rebalancing the AVL tree. We are missing some lines here. Not a whole lot of lines, but a few lines. It should work correctly every time. Make sense? I'll uh, put the, uh, the latest link. I'll upload this to GitHub and put the latest link up. And this is due on Tuesday.